Okay, we're here in the tasting room, so to speak, and uh, I've got it uh, hanging on me, rigged up to my Vox VT30 amp uh, with a 20-foot cable. It's, uh, the amp is set to be just a little bit crunchy. It's kind of the way I like it, and uh, it's not you know, horribly distorted like Paul Riario type. So uh, it's, uh, it's pretty clean. I think it'll give you a pretty good representation. I'm using a Red Bear Big Jazzer pick because the train spotters in there will want to know. You guys sometimes, I'm telling you. Anyway, uh, again, ergonomically, this guitar hangs on me wonderfully, and I've had a couple of hours to play on it now. Uh, it feels just wonderful. It's nice and light. Uh, the body contours are just out of this world. One of my buddies says, this looks like something that fell off of a spaceship, and he's exactly right. It does. Uh, you know, if you check out some of the picks, it's, it's just an amazing uh, feeling guitar. Uh, the neck access all the way up to 24th fret is just astounding. I mean, it's just wonderful. This is a neck through guitar, as I had mentioned in the uh, in unveiling. And uh, because of that, there's, I mean, there's almost no heel whatsoever. What heel, he said. So uh, the, the access is great. I'm using the uh, C22J and C22B pickups. These are different pickups than uh, in my other carbons. The main difference is that the others are covered and these are not, and I thought these might be a little bit brighter. To tell you the truth, I don't notice a whole lot of difference in the pickups individually. There's some, but there's a little bit of difference. Okay, so let's stop gabbing and start talking. Oh, no, wait, wait, a little more gabbing here. I do have the Holdsworth headstock on here, and I love the look of it. To me, it's the perfect complement to this surf green matte finish guitar that looks kind of like a 57 Bel Air or T-Bird or something like that. Uh, this just kind of finishes out the package. Uh, two tuners on top, four on the bottom, and more than a couple of times now, I've been uh, grabbing this peg thinking it was the G, and I'm going, what's going on, what's going on? Remembering, oh no, that's the D. So uh, that'll uh, keep my 60-year-old brain working a little bit over time, eh? Okay, so enough gabbing, let's get to the tone report here. Uh, here we are wide open, and I'm going to start on the uh, neck pickup, okay? A little bit of crunch to that, okay? Uh, again, it's not a whole heck of a lot different from what I, I would expect out of my SH-550 or my uh, CS-6. Maybe just a little bit brighter, not, uh, not a huge amount, okay? Let's, I'm going to skip the middle position for now and go down to the bridge pickup, which is a uh, C22J. A lot of nice snap and sing in that one. I feel like doing some Dick Dale licks on this thing with this color and that sound. Okay, so uh, the thing that is different though that I've noticed on the C22s versus the S22s is that when I go to the middle position, on some of my guitars there's a bit more brightness and uh, you can tell, for instance, on the SH-550, you can tell that I've kicked in both pickups. Uh, on, the, uh, on the CT-6, there's not a whole heck of a lot of difference when you, when you kick them both on. On this one, there's a lot of difference. I mean, here's, here's neck. Here's bridge. And here's both. real cool, uh, a little more nasally tone to them there, and uh, I, I really like that. Okay, speaking of tone, uh, the one thing that I notice on this, it may be a different uh, cap in the tone controls, maybe how the uh, C22s react a little bit with the tone knob, but here is the tone knob wide open. <laughs> 
Sorry, I had to let it sing because it does. Okay, I'm gonna turn the tone all the way down and check this out. There's a huge amount of difference. I don't remember hearing that much play and variation in any of my other carbons. So, uh, open it up a little bit. A little more. Oh God, that thing sings. And all the way up into. And I may find that during regular playing, I'm going to back it off just a little bit, but uh, not a whole heck of a lot. Just kind of depends on the venue and, you know, if the other guitarist is making me mad, etc. <laughs> so, okay, uh, let's go on to where things really start uh, popping in, in a different fashion from what I'm used to on my other carbons here. Uh, I've got. Uh, coil split switches here, and I've got a polarity, not phase, polarity switch here. Uh, so I'm going to take these a little bit one at a time here, and we're back on the neck pickup, and right now we're in humbucking mode. Okay, I'm going to split that pickup, so now we're just in single coil, coil mode. Wow, that is a huge, huge difference. A lot more difference than when I split the coils on my others. And it almost may, may be enough that when I split the coil, I may dial down that tone knob just a bit. Just to just kind of tame that uh, that high end down a little bit, but wow, what a huge difference! Okay, let's go down to the bridge pickup here, and here it is in humbucker mode. Sorry, I love these guitars. Can you tell? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and split it now. So, that's with it split, that's with it not split. There's uh, quite a bit of difference. There's not as much as there is in the uh, neck pickup though, for some reason, at least to my ear and with my cabling and my setup, etc. Okay, so we've run through both pickups in humbucking mode, singly and together. We've done the uh, coil split. Oh, I know, I forgot to do uh, both pickups with coil split. Okay, here's both pickups. Humbucking. Now let's split the top coil. Gives it some more top end here. I'll split the uh, bridge coil. Let me uh, unsplit it now so we're back in humbucking for both of them. Okay, let's split them both now. So we're running two single coils. Uh, and uh, the way Carvin rigs things, the two single coils make one humbucker, just a big, fat, wide humbucker. <laughs> waiting for me to do that, weren't you? Okay, let's go back to uh, humbucking for both of them there. Large difference. Okay, so there are some great tonal variations there. Now for the kind of secret weapon here on, on uh, in this switching setup here. Uh, here is the polarity, not phase, but polarity switch. And uh, listen to the huge difference when I am using the neck pickup. And I put down the polarity switch. Yeah, gee, huge difference, isn't there? 
No, there's no difference. That's because it switches the polarity of the entire pickup, okay? So if I'm just on the neck pickup, or I'm just on the bridge pickup, there's no difference. Get it? Okay, so now let's go to both pickups and I've got polarity in the uh, standard mode. Now I'm going to switch it to polarity switch and check this out. You know, it just occurs to me that this sounds a bit, it's got that sort of nasally sound to it, uh, like my Dano uh, lipstick pickups do. It's got that, that real... Okay, I'll switch it back to regular polarity. Out of polarity. Big, big difference. And you can mostly tell it on the chords. Even the people who don't play guitar out there will hear that difference. So that is really a fun option to have. How often will I use it? I don't know. Maybe I won't, maybe I will. But uh, let's go both pickups now in single coil, okay? So there's single coil. Let's flip them out of polarity. It's like, whoa, dude. I think if I ever use that mode, I'm going to be cranking the tone control down. Yeah. Ooh, that's nice and usable. I hadn't tried it like that before, so you're the first to hear this, right? That's nice and usable. Okay, so I've got the tone almost all the way up. Let me turn all the way up just to see. Oh, that's pretty nice. Kind of got an AM radio type of a sound. Really cool, really cool. Okay, let's go back up to humbuckers and again, neck, both, and bridge. Okay, lots of combinations, lots and lots of flexibility here. Uh, maybe more than I'm ever going to need in my in, in the type of music that I do, uh, but maybe not. You know, maybe I can just go ahead and uh, pull out some wild stuff. Oh, wait a minute! I got to show you before I go. You know, hang with me here. Uh, one really neat trick that I found is I'm going to have the uh, neck pickup in humbucker. I'm going to split the coil on the uh, bridge pickup and I'm going to throw them out of polarity, okay? So I got uh, coil and polarity down, okay? So right now I'm on my neck pickup. Got that nice sort of chunky rhythm sound. Okay, now when I switch to the middle, not only do I get a, a single coil pickup added into the mix, but it's also out of polarity. I don't know that I'll ever use that, but boy, isn't that a cool option to have? Or, you know, let's throw it the other way. Let's put the, uh, let's put the top pickup into single coil uh, out of polarity again. And so here we are down on the bridge pickup in uh, humbucking mode.
I guess I don't need to play that whole solo again, but uh, you know, it's kind of hard to stop playing on one of these. Okay, I gotta stop because if I don't stop, I'm gonna be going for ever and hours and hours and hours, and you guys are, you guys have heard enough. So, anyway, uh, Carbon SC90, uh, this one happens to be Surf Green, baby. And uh, Satin Matte Finish, That this is just an unreal color. It just, uh, it kind of makes me stare at it for a while. Uh, Bird's Eye Maple uh, Fingerboard, Abalone Diamonds, uh, Holdsworth Headstock. Uh, this one's customized now. I just got the nameplate done for it. This one's named Patricia. That's after my dear mother. And uh, let's see, it's a stop tail and I've got uh, some nice uh, perloid buttons on the top here. Maybe you can see, maybe you've seen that in the picture. And then the uh, volume and tone control have perloid inlays. So it's kind of like a, you know, 57 T-Bird Bel Air, something like that. It's just kind of a uh, custom spaceship type guitar. Uh, really, really like it. Oh, one other thing. Yeah, right. Sure, sure. Just one other thing. Uh, on this one, basically, I've got the entire body plus neck painted. And I did that mostly just for the aesthetic appeal of it. I just thought that that looked really nice. It's like all one piece of art. Um, I have uh, two guitars, two carvings that have clear coat necks on them. They feel very comfortable. I've got two carvings that have tongue oil necks. They feel great. And I thought, okay, this one I'm going to go for sort of a middling thing. So with the satin mat, uh, it's, it is kind of a midway feel between the clear coat and the tongue oil. Very comfy. Uh, I haven't ever haven't played it at a gig yet, so we'll see what happens at the gig, but I think it's going to be pretty darn comfortable. <laughs> Okay, stop yakking, man. Put an end to this. Okay, so remember, what are the 10 things that are most important to your tone? Huh? Right there, folks. Carry them with you all the time. Never let them go. Uh, but having some, some of these, some nice of these, uh, really helps. And it makes, makes the journey more fun. Uh, and just... Uh, in kind of a closing note here, this has this is totally off the subject, but it's weighing upon my mind really heavily. If you don't know the Heimlich maneuver, uh, learn it. And if you don't know how to do the self Heimlich maneuver, learn it. Because uh, about two and a half hours ago, I nearly died uh, from choking on food, and uh, l luckily my Beautiful wife was right there. She knew the Heimlich. She saved me and uh, literally saved my life. So if you don't know the Heimlich, please, please, please learn it. And uh, that's all I got to say, because if my wife hadn't have known it, you wouldn't have gotten this tone report. So again, off topic, but you got to keep on rocking. Okay? See you soon. <laughs>